So now that we've established the characteristic highlights of frog gastrulation to be on the lookout for, let's put that into context and now talk about specifically what frog gastrulation will involve in terms of the events. So this will be entitled Frog Gastrulation 2, and we can subtitle this uh, the sequence of events. Just like we did for the sea urchin, we're going to do the same thing here. And of course, I'm going to give you a figure as we're going through this. Take a look at figure 47.10. does a great job of visualizing this entire process. So let's begin. The frog gastrulation sequence of events will start off in the following way. What we're going to have is, of course, a focus on the dorsal side. The dorsal side was the beginning of gastrulation, like we saw, and that's a characteristic highlight that will show up immediately. So now, the cells on that dorsal side that we established prior in the previous flowchart will do the following. They will do a process that we're comfortable with that we've mentioned before, and that is invaginate. So that means they fold inward. The cells on the dorsal side of this blastula right now, because we're going to turn it into a gastrula eventually, they will fold inward. They will invaginate to form what we'll just call a small indented crease for right now. A small indented crease. Okay. Now, this small indented crease, later on, basically, we're going to develop, and it's actually just going to be give rise to the blastopore. And there it is. That's our blastopore, another characteristic highlight. Now, the blastopore serving as this small indented crease, um, right above this small indented crease called the blastopore for right now, is going to be a structure that we want to keep in mind uh, for a little bit later. It's called the dorsal lip. So this is a sort of a side note to just put here and store in the back of your head. We're not going to talk about this in great detail yet. So right above the crease is what I tried to write here. You're going to have this structure called the dorsal lip. Um, more on that later. But let's focus on the blastopore. During this process, um, the blastopore is formed, correct? We've invaginated, we've called and formed this blastopore. Later on, what we're going to see is that more cells at this dorsal side, more cells are going to continue to invaginate here. They will continue, continue to invaginate at this dorsal side. So I'll just say here. And as this is continuing, as this folding of in, inward folding is happening continuously, uh, what's basically happening is that the blastopore, as you'll see in the figure, that blastopore structure is getting longer. Blastopore gets longer as a result of this inward folding. And now, as it's getting longer, the blastopore, this opening is going to start stretching. It's going to start extending. So much so that the blastopore extends around both. It extends around both sides of the embryo. What's basically happening right now is that what was once only on one side, because it's continuously getting longer, continuously getting more of these cells and vaginating, you're going to then just get this extension that's going to grow around both sides of the embryo when it initially was only on just one side of the embryo. So now what's going to happen is, since it's a circular structure, if you have something extending this way and you have something extending that way, they're eventually going to meet. And that's what happens here. Eventually, both since it's growing on bro both sides, both ends will meet. Something will have to sort of, there's going to be a meeting of both of these, and the blastopore forms this full circle. So, and blastopore, blastopore forms a circle. Okay, big deal. What does this mean? What is the consequence of this? Now we're going to sort of highlight this formation of this circle uh, in a little bit more detail because what's happening as this is all occurring, we've established that this is happening, simultaneously we'll state the following. As the blastopore itself is forming, as blastopore is forming, and you'll see this in the figure as well, they do a good job of visualizing this, so dot dot dot, as this is happening, there's going to be some other stuff happening. Other stuff will include a sheet of cells, sheet of cells um, is going to spread out. It spreads out at the animal hemisphere. 
Now, if you remember, the animal hemisphere is the one without the yolk, completely independent of the yolk, completely away from the yolk. It's not the vegetal side, it's the animal side. Okay, so this, this sheet of cells is spreading out. As this sheet of cells is spreading out in this structure, this is going to cause basically cell migration. Here's cell migration again. Cell migration is going to happen to a structure that we've talked about already called the dorsal lip. When did we talk about it? Right over here, right above this blastopore. Remember how it's forming? There's going to be this crease that also is forming called a dorsal lip. So as this is doing its thing, there's going to be a dorsal lip and there's going to be some cells from the animal hemisphere moving towards that dorsal lip that is also being formed simultaneously. So it's a lot going on at once. I understand it's difficult to picture really, but as this is happening, you're going to then have these, these cells invaginate, the ones that are moving towards the dorsal lip. They invaginate as this sheet rolls inward. Okay, so the sheet rolls inward as a result of the invagination. So the sheet rolls inward um, over the dorsal lip. Okay, so this is very detailed, very sort of hard to picture stuff. Big picture here, what I want you to understand about this side of the flowchart is essentially the process of involution has occurred. Involution has happened. Involution happens as the blastopore is forming. These are the details associated with involution. This is essentially just a rolling of cells. These cells are rolling and they're creating this invagination of folding inward at the dorsal lip. As this is happening, I will tell you that involution continues. Okay, So involution continues. It's happening, it starts, and it continues. What's going to happen as a result of this is that more cells more cells are going to be rolling inward, just what involution means, rolling inward, so it's a combination of involution and invagination, rolling inward over the dorsal lip, DL for dorsal lip. Now, as this is happening, you're essentially going to be causing the, this big consequence. This overall, the purpose of this is that it's expanding two germ layers. The, it expands the endoderm and also the mesoderm. That's the big idea to keep in mind. You have this expansion happening as a result of continued involution. So what you want to take home from this side of the flowchart is the following. Overall, overall, this results in the archenteron growth and formation. This results in both the archenteron growth and its formation as a whole. This is going to be because you have all this movement, all this cell movement, all this cell involution, invagination is going to be happening into the embryo. It's all happening into the embryo. It's not going outside of the embryo, but all within the embryo. And this is going to be filling up the blastocele. All this movement into embryo is filling up I should say, is up here filling up that blastocele. Now, the blastocele, as a part of the blastula structure, is an empty cavity that's now being filled up by all these cells that are rolling inward. They're rolling inward, and they're creating and filling up this blastocele, so much so that the blastocele itself shrinks. Okay, The blastocele essentially is going to be gone. Blastocele shrinks, and because it's being filled up with cells, it's technically not a blastocele anymore, and therefore we can just say that that blastocele, at the end of this process of involution and invagination and cell migration, disappears. Okay, what's the consequence of that? Finally, to sort of round out this, the overall consequence then is going to be the fact that um, as we move forward, as this is happening, other cells at animal pull, I shouldn't say the overall consequence just yet, that's the next video, but other things that are happening in addition to this stuff over here is that other cells at the animal pole are actually changing shape. What is that called? Morphogenesis, right? They're, they're changing their shape. Here. Other cells at the animal pole change shape. They spread out over the outer surface. Spread out over outer surface. You should be thinking right now. Outer surface, I'm thinking of gastrulation. Gastrulation involves 
germ layers, three of them specifically if we're talking about a frog. I already covered the endoderm. I already covered the mesoderm. I'm definitely missing something. This outer surface is probably going to give rise. This movement at the outer surface is probably going to give rise to something like the ectoderm. And that's exactly what we're getting towards. Essentially, when this is happening, the blastopore is getting smaller. As the blastopore is getting smaller due to this occurrence above, the endoderm is getting bigger. Endoderm is getting bigger. And as the endoderm is getting bigger, it's spreading over the surface. Over the surface of this blastula structure. And overall, this is going to cause an indentation. And I actually spoke a little prematurely. Ectoderm is coming, not just yet, in just the next video we're going to be covering the ectoderm right after this step of indentation. Indentation forms all around embryo. Okay, big thing I want you to understand about this is that this is very hard to visualize. If you're confused, I completely understand. It's difficult. So you have to take a look at figure 47.10 and I highly suggest looking at the playlist section and the videos that highlight gastrulation, specifically this frog gastrulation, to really understand this. Overall, what I want you to take home from this part of the sequence of events is the following. The end result of all this is going to be a gastrula, just like in the sea urchin, but the processes that are going to create a gastrula are different. Notice that there's the term involution here. Notice that we have this rolling inward, this filling up the, of the blastocele, this complicated blastopore getting small. All this stuff is different than the sea urchin. Those are things to keep in mind as we move forward. We'll conclude frog gastrulation in the next video.